Amen. Yes. Good spirit and service this morning. Uh, let's all stand as we start our service for tonight. <laughs> Brother William, would you ask the Lord's blessing on our service tonight? In the name of Jesus, we have the victory, right? Amen. Okay. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Who can tell what God will do? Who can tell what it do for you in the name of Jesus Jesus we have the victory yes in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we have the victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Satan will have to flee Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Who can tell what God will do? Who can tell what he'll do for you? In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. Hallelujah. We have to claim the victory in the name of Jesus, don't we? Hallelujah. Love lifted me. Hallelujah. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. My soul's best song, faithful, loving service to to him be.
Jesus completely saves. He will live to buy his love out of the angry waves. Be the master of the sea, fellows his will obey. He your savior wants to be be saved to Savior. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Such love. Hallelujah. That God should love a sinner such as I should yearn to change my sorrow into bliss. i rest till he had planned to bring me love. How wonderful is love like this. Such love Such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this, that Christ should join so freely in the skin. Although it's in his death on Calvary, did ever human tongue find nobler thing? And love divine that ransomed me. Such love, such wondrous love. Such love, such wondrous love. That God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. That for a willful act as such as I. The Father planned, the Savior bled and died. Redemption for a worthless slave to buy, who long at law and grace defied. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. And now he takes me to his heart of son. He asks me not to fill a servant's place. The far off country wanderings all are done. Wide open are his arms of grace. Such love, such wondrous love, such love. Such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Such love, such wondrous love. Such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful is love like this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Yes, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Yes, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. 
Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Hallelujah. Can you remember when he set you free? <laughs> when he brought you out? Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> we can't forget a love like that, can we? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Praise the Lord. We continue to pray for Granny B. Uh, I believe that she come out all right, but her vehicle wasn't so lucky. Uh, I'm not too young. I know they said they had to pick up a fender. So uh, we need to continue to remember Sister Barbara and her wreck and little Mila Grace and our little grandbaby Maddie. Uh, Lake and Wallace, knee surgery, 15 years old and still having a lot of pain. And her grandfather, Bobby Wallace, with double pneumonia. Bushy Engelhart's in the hospital. Uh, Ronald Burnett and Debbie. And uh, Estella, Lavelle Davis, Roger McCandless, Beth's brother, Kevin McNichols going back for a scope on that prostate cancer. I told him we'd be praying for him. And so uh, then Brother Jay's daughter has now come down with the COVID and her husband also. So we need to remember them in prayer. And so uh, any uh, anything else? Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Pardon? Yes. Estella was able to get up, get to a chair, and sit in the chair for an hour. Praise the Lord. And then get back in the chair and bed. So Amen. It's a pretty good accomplishment, I would think. Amen. So, Amen. Amen. After a surgery. Praise the Lord. Amen. Unspoken requests. Yes. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord. You're doing great and mighty works. We thank you for your hand upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the awesome things you're doing. And, Lord, for these requests that have been brought to your throne. Father, we just ask you to minister to Lake and Wallace in this knee surgery. Father and her grandfather going through this uh, double pneumonia. Father, we just ask you to minister. And that family, Butchie Engelhart in the hospital, Ronald Burnett facing surgery, Debbie Summers facing surgery, and Christy, Lord, we just ask you to minister to these families. We thank you, Lord, for watching out for Sister Barb and no injuries. And, Father, we just ask you to bring a peace that surpasses understanding. Oh, Mila Grace, oh, Maddie, they need your touch in their bodies, God. Be with Charles and Maryville Harrison as they go through this time of transition, Lord. We thank you for the peace that comes and surpasses understanding. Lavelle Davis, Roger McCandless, Father, they need a touch in their body. Brother Kevin McNichols. And Jay's daughter and husband, Lord, they need your healing touch upon them. You know every request, spoken or unspoken, financial, physical, or spiritual, God. You can do more in a heartbeat than we can do in a lifetime. So we just thank you and praise you for this opportunity to bring the needs of your people. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all very much. Thank you, those joining online. Having camera issues again, I think I've got them straightened out for a little while. We'll see. Uh, Tuesday prayer meeting, 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. We do have a food truck, food pantry truck coming in. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Uh, I'll be online devotion Monday and Friday. Uh, Wednesday is our Thanksgiving meal in the Life Center uh, at 6 o'clock. Uh, church is providing the turkey and the ham, and we've got some vegetables left over from our 
meet and greet the other day, so we'll have that warmed up also. And so just bring what you like and bring enough to share. And uh, Harvey Baxter will be with us Sunday. Still waiting on a word from Pastor Brett exactly when he's going to be here. He told me he would let me know. And so I got to let the district know so we can get the service planned out and all that stuff. So we appreciate you. And Donna made the announcement about the secret sister. So keep that in mind. And then God is just doing mighty, mighty things. I tell you, it just uh, amazes me to no end to come out to church and walk around and, I mean, just feel his presence. And uh, every, every day, every day, it's just a blessing to feel him wrap his loving arms around us. And we know he holds us in the hollow of his hand. And we know he has a direction and a purpose for each and every one of us. We all have a calling. And that calling is to be outside these four walls and let people see Jesus in us. That light shining forth in everything we say, everything we do, every place we go. They're watching. They're watching to see what we're doing and watching to make sure we're truthful on what we say and what we do. I'm going to be reading out of Psalms 103 in King James Version. This is Thanksgiving soul music. 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all your diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like eagles. Father, I thank you. God, I give you the praise and glory. I ask you to speak through your servant. Your words will bring a comfort and a direction and a guidance. And as I've said, my words will bring confusion. Father, I ask you to speak through me. We give you the praise and glory for the mighty things you're going to do. Lighthouse will be a light set on a hill, shining forth your light, God. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. On a Sunday night before our Thanksgiving celebration, we need to look in the book of Thanksgiving and Praise. And of course, that would be the book of Psalms. Looking at the 103rd Psalm, let me tell you, the Hebrew word translated Psalms come from the Hebrew word hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. So when somebody says hallelujah, what they are actually saying is praise the Lord. And by the way, this word hallelujah cuts across the language barrier. It's translated the same in every language. Well, that's what the book of Psalms is all about, praising the Lord, Jesus Christ. Do you know what it means to us? <laughs> We're going to learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth. And we've got to invest time in the book of worship and praise in the book of Psalms. Think of the book of Psalms as God's introduction to worship 101. And most of us need to enroll. I don't believe there's a better time of the year to enroll than during the Thanksgiving season. I can hear some negative naysayers saying, Now, Pastor, I know it's Thanksgiving time and all, but I don't have any reason to give thanks. My life is a disaster waiting to happen. Well, I want to say to you tonight that if you don't have much to be thankful for, why not be thankful for some of the things you don't have? I mean, if you cannot muster up any thanks for what you do have, muster up thanks for what you don't have. There's always something to be thankful for. You say, thankful? I can't even pay my bills. Well, all right then, be thankful you're not one of your creditors. You see, there's always something to be thankful for. In our time together tonight from Psalm 103, I read about the soul music of thanksgiving. Psalm 103 is a psalm of praise to God that begins deep within the soul. That's why I call it soul music. Let me say that this kind of soul music is not for everybody. This kind of soul music has nothing to do with the color of your skin, 
It has everything to do with the condition of your soul. This kind of soul music comes from a saved soul. And a saved soul is a saved soul that has been saved by the blood of the Lamb. Once you have a saved soul, you can sing a soul music at Thanksgiving every day. You say, but what about those times of disaster, difficulty? Can I make music then? Can I give thanks to God then? Especially then. It is soul music that gets you through those times of disaster and difficulty. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. You remember Paul and Silas, they were in prison. The Bible says around midnight, and they were praying and praising, singing hymns to God. Next thing they knew, a great earthquake came, and it's Acts 16, 26. The foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened. Everyone's chains were loosed. That night, they had a jailhouse rock. God was responding to their prayer and praise. Let me tell you, on this Sunday night of this Thanksgiving time, prison doors shake open when there's prayer and praise. I don't know what's holding us prison, what has you in chains, but I do know prison doors shake open and chains are loosed when there's prayer and praise. We're thinking about soul music of Thanksgiving. In beginning in verse 1, we find the call to thanksgiving. Verse 1 and 2a, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So what does David mean here when he says, bless the Lord? Well, bless the Lord means praise the Lord. That's what this word bless means. It's a picture of somebody who kneels down, offers praise to God, Bless the Lord is to praise our Lord. Let me ask you a question about praising the Lord these days. You say, Pastor, why should I praise the Lord these days? Look over to Psalm 104.1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. How about praising him for his greatness? Psalms 106.1. Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endures forever. Psalm 118, 1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good, because his mercy endures forever. Psalm 115, 1, Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory, because of your mercy and because of your truth. Psalm 117, 1 and 2, Oh, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Uh, Laud him, which means praise him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Praise him for his greatness, for his goodness, for his mercy, for his truth. The soul music of thanksgiving calls us to give thanks to our God. Now, the atheist doesn't have anything to thank God for. There is no thanksgiving God is the heart of the atheist. A man doesn't give thanks to God in whom he doesn't believe. There's no such thing as being thankful atheist. The trouble with being an atheist, you have nobody to talk to when you're alone or nobody to thank. How frustrating when he has nobody to thank. The agnostic doesn't thank God. That's a person who doesn't deny that God exists. He's just skeptical. That kind of man doesn't give thanks to God because he's not sure he even exists. The self-sufficient doesn't thank God either. That's the person who takes credit for the food on the table and clothes on his back. He's so full of himself and he's not hungry to thank God. It is from thankless hearts that comes discontent, greed, lust, materialism, humanism. Therefore, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. When we gather here to bless his name, God delivers us from heartless worship. 
We ought to have some soul music every time we gather to bless his name. Praise starts deep within our souls. Listen to this sad verse, Isaiah 29, 13. Inasmuch as these people draw near to me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but I remove their hearts far from me. Do you know why God called their worship heartless? Because they refused to obey his word. They were offering lip service. They would sing on Sunday, then live life with the devil on Monday. And God said, these people draw near to me with their mouths, but not their hearts. Do, do you mean to say I'm to give thanks for this tough patch that I'm going through right now? Am I supposed to give thanks for this thorn in the flesh that doesn't seem to be taken away from me? Well, that's a tough one, but yeah. You have to stay in that attitude of thanksgiving. That attitude of thanksgiving can transform a situation, and we're able to give thanks, thanks for all things, even some object, objectable things. Quite naturally, you may say, I'm not going to give thanks for this illness, and I'm not going to give thanks for this person has done to me. Then at least start here and give thanks for the presence of God in that situation. And that God has not left you. Even though you had a setback, God is still present and willing to redeem the situation. Then there's the next step. Begin to realize that even though the worst circumstances, God can always work it out. Isn't the risen living Christ a great reminder that even the evil of the cross can be transformed into a new and extended life? I remember Corey Ten Boom. She died after many years serving the Lord. What a remarkable, gracious lady. She and her family lived through the Nazi Holocaust. They had Jewish people in their home and would have otherwise been killed. When she was in a Nazi prison camp, it was such a flea-ridden, terrible place that she just couldn't stand it. Her older sister, Betsy, but I found something in the Bible that will help us. It says, in all things, give thanks. Corey said, I, I, I can't give thanks for these fleas. Betsy said, well, give thanks that we're together. Most families have been split up. Corey thought, well, I can do that. Her sister continued, give thanks that somehow the guards didn't check our belongings and we have our Bible with us. She'd give thanks for that. But Corey would not even think of giving thanks for the fleas. Later they found out the only reason they were not molested and harmed by the guards was because their captors were so repulsed by the fleas they would not go in. Give thanks even for those lowly creatures. In the town of Enterprise, Alabama, there's a monument in the middle of the town square. You probably think it's probably a Confederate general, but it's not. It's a monument to a bow weevil. Bow weevil is the animal that destroys cotton. The, can't, the town depended upon cotton. In 1915, the bow weevil destroyed their livelihood. But through this, they learned the importance of diversified farming. They learned to plant peanuts, corn, and other crops. In two years, they erected a monu monument to the bow rebel to be a reminder that through a terrible event, good things came to their town. The Old Testament patriarch Joseph said to his brothers who had sold him into slavery and would have killed him, you meant this for evil. God meant it for good. That was his monument to the power of God, bringing good out of an apparent evil. God can use the worst of any circumstance in this fallen world to bring the best about for us. Because God certainly did not want his son to die on a cross, but when it became necessary, the despised instrument of death became the way we could come to know God. The cross became the means by which we can give thanks in all things, those things obvious, obscure, even objectionable, in everything, give thanks. 
That's what this 103rd Psalm is all about. It's a soul music of thanksgiving. And the first thing we find is a call to thanksgiving. The second thing is a cause to thanksgiving. And that cause begins in the middle of verse 2. Forget not all his benefits. Now some things are worth forgetting, but other things are worth remembering. And David tells us that the call to thanksgiving comes out of a cause of thanksgiving. In other words, if you're having a hard time these days offering God some soul music, stop and consider his benefits. Verse 2, and forget not all his benefits. You see, the word benefits, it means his work, his doing. The soul music of thanksgiving takes place when you see what God is doing in your life. You may not be able to remember all his benefits, but don't forget there are benefits. And don't forget, of all things, what he's done in your life. And he's not done. There's more to come. Starting in verse 3, David lists six benefits, six works, six things God has done, not only in his life, but in the life of every child of God. Think of them as links of the chain. These six links make up God's chain of grace. The first link in verse 3, who forgives all your iniquities. He spares us. The word forgives means to pardon, to spare. Thank him. Praise him for your pardon. God forgives all your iniquities. Do you know what iniquities are? They're your sins, your guilt, your misery. All the misery and guilt sin brings into our lives, but oh, the mercy and grace our God brings into our lives. And notice that God's forgive all your sin, not some of your misery, not most of your guilt, but hallelujah, he pardons them all. He spares us from them all. Colossians 2, 13 and 14, he has made a life together with him, having forgiven you all trespassing, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against you, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. <clears throat> now continuing in verse 3, he heals all your diseases. He not only spares us, he sanctifies us. Now be sure God heals diseases. But do you know there's a greater disease than physical, dis a physical disease? Worse than physical disease is a spiritual disease. Disease of the soul. Hate, jealousy, greed, resentment, unforgiveness. The worst disease is the sin disease. There is no healing for a sick soul until sin has been forgiven. You see, disease is the result of sin. Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Healed of what? Our transgressions. The cross became an altar where God took away our sins. You can ask, where did God take away my sin? Look down to verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us, the worst disease you can have is sin because it destroys you physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And once God spares us, he begins to sanctify us and to heal us. He spares us. He sanctifies us. Then we read in verse 4, he saves us. He redeems your life from destructions. You see the word redeemed, it means to preserve from destruction. Just as God delivered David from the sword of Goliath and the spear of Saul, he delivers us from the penalty and the punishment of sin. To redeem, it means to ransom, to release, to deliver, to buy something back. 
remember that God has redeemed us and delivered us and saved us from the penalty of sin. That ought to put some soul music in your heart. Redeemed how I love to proclaim. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through infinite mercy, his child, and forever I am. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, Psalm 107, 2. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in his name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. He forgives all your iniquities. He spares us. He heals all our diseases. He sanctifies us. He redeems our life from destruction. He saves us. Verse 4, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, he surrounds us. The word crown literally means surround something. We are surrounded with his loving kindness and tender mercies. <laughs> Psalm 512, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him as with a shield. He satisfies us. Verse 5, he satisfies your mouth with good things. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Knowing that God satisfies us with good things will give us some soul music of thanksgiving. Yes, he spares us, he sanctifies us, he saves us, he surrounds us, he satisfies us, and he strengthens us. Verse 5, so that your youth is renewed like eagles. Those God saves, he strengthens. Those he redeems, he renews. As you go through this Thanksgiving week, don't forget all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is in with. <laughs> bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord, O my soul. Henry Van Dyke said, Gratitude is the inward feeling of kindness received. Thankfulness is a natural impulse to express that feeling. Thanksgiving is a following of that impulse. It's time to live a life of thanksgiving, a soul music of thanksgiving. God has given his very best for us, and we've got to return our very best to him. And that is to be a witness and a testimony of his love and his mercy and grace outside these four walls. But a lot of places I've been, they've got a sign over the door. You are now entering your mission field, and that's where it's at. It's awesome to come in here and receive strength, receive guidance, but it's be outside these four walls and let them see God's love and mercy flowing through us and everything we say and everything we do. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this day. God, I give you the glory for great and awesome are you. And Father, I thank you for this opportunity as a soul music of thanksgiving. Father, help us not only live in thanksgiving, but in thanks living. For it's about you, God. We know it's about you. All things are possible to those that believe. Father, we know that great and mighty things are going on at Lighthouse and better things are coming. God, I thank you and I praise you for the wonderful works you're doing. We'll give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before we go to prayer, prayer time, we've got any testimonies. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Word of our testimonies. Hallelujah, yes, sir. This morning I had some brother that uh, that called to ask him that needed him. Yes. Yes.
Yes. Yes. Amen. And Yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank Brother Robert. He uh, come up with the idea to call the ministers that have helped us over the last few months, and I made some phone calls and invited them to our Thanksgiving meal, and most of them had prior commitments, but some of them I'm waiting on a text back, and I got a call back, so I appreciate your thoughtfulness, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, anything else? Any other? We, I just love these corporate times of prayer. Uh, God is doing great things, and so we just have this time. I'll go back. I got some music set up. I'll go back here and set the music up, and we'll just thank you. Uh,